Hello, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. I hope you've had a chance to see my latest satirical video about who sponsors the Corbett Report. Just a little comedic fun that I had on the website yesterday. But <laughs> I have a confession to make, and that's that every time that I have a purely comedic or satirical post like that, there's always a moment of hesitation before I hit the publish button, because I know 100% ironclad law of the universe know that no matter how over the top, no matter how obviously satirical whatever it is I'm posting is, there is someone out there that will take it completely seriously. And I wish I could find an exception to this rule, but I swear every single time it happens. Again, no matter how outrageous it is. So even the Yanny Laurel video that I posted a week or two ago, uh, it, you know, go to dictionary.com when you type in taxation and go to the audio pronunciation, it says theft. <laughs> even if you don't know anything about the taxation is theft meme, clearly you understand that that's satirical. And of course, 99.999% of the people out there did understand that that was satirical and comedic. But, as always, there were a couple of people who said, that's strange, I went to the site and it didn't do that, James. <laughs> Look, I get it, I get it. I'm a serious person and talk about serious matters, so it's impossible that I ever say anything that's satirical. Well, no, that's not a, the case, and I've had a, I have a sense of humor that is absolutely a part of me and has been present and on display since I started the website. I've done sat satirical and comedic videos and, and podcasts and things the entire history of the Corporate Report website. And, hey, hello, the number one most popular thing I've ever done, the thing that I'm still known by, is my 9-11 conspiracy theory satirical comedy comedy video. So, clearly, that is part of what I do. And... Um, I understand the argument that people will make, well, on the internet no one can see, you know, see the way that your, your body language or hear the tone of your voice, and hey, on the internet there are people cra claiming completely seriously all sorts of crazy things, so sometimes it truly is impossible to tell if someone is being satirical or, or not, but, hmm, but like the Annie Laurel video, I mean, you see me, you hear me, you see the smirk. Um, you hear the comedic music I put in the background. <laughs> it's basically like the architect sketch in Monty Python where uh, it starts flashing satire on the screen, which perhaps was a reference to the Ronan Point disaster of 1968, and they were trying to say, hey guys, we're not making fun of a national tragedy here, but I think was also perhaps a meta comment on the inability of the average television viewer to identify satire. So, here it is, guys! Satire, satire, satire! Maybe I should start doing that with my comedic videos, just flashing the word satire on the screen. But even then, it might not work. Let me give you an example of that. Um, last year, there was this uh, story from the Duffel blog, which I'm sure many of you probably haven't heard of, but if you have, uh, it is essentially The Onion, but specializes in military-related stories. And, um... They had an, uh, uh, an article, the headline was something like, uh, Saudi Arabia beheads first robot citizen. Uh, talking about Sophia, of course, the, you know, this, the robot that was granted citizenship by Saudi Arabia last year. And the, the, uh, I mean, you get the story. Essentially, it's, uh, this is this unescorted woman walking around our country without a hijab and, and giving, expressing opinions of her own. Of course, what did she expect? So she was, you know, basically stoned to death, or stoned and then beheaded by this crowd of people. That's the story, right? Ha ha ha. Clearly, it's actually quite a funny headline, quite a funny idea, right? I laughed when I saw it, and then, uh, at the time, I was still on the Twitter mind virus, so I thought, oh, this, this is funny, I'll tweet this out. As I go to tweet it out, I remember thinking to myself, I know, no, no, there are people who are going to take this 100% seriously. So, when I tweeted it out, although it pained me to do so, I actually put in brackets, I believe in block capitals, I put satire, S-A-T-I-R-E, after the title of the, the headline. Uh, just to scream it, like the architect said, satire, 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 so that nobody could take it seriously. I'm not putting this out as a real news story, it's just a funny little headline commenting. And it, it, 
there are, there is value to it. It's a, it's a kind of commentary on the things that we all know about Saudi Arabia, but we're not supposed to talk about because they're a U.S. ally and things. I mean, there is a value to the, the satire there um, as well. I tweeted it out, and I still had people taking it seriously. And when I, when I tweeted something like, uh, I, I tweeted something in response like, oh, even when you type the word satire in the headline, uh, it's still, there are still people who take it seriously or something. I was lamenting that fact. And someone responded <laughs> to me to say, oh, I, I don't, I've heard that word, but I don't really know what satire means. <laughs> Which, okay, well, at least he was admitting it. So, there you go. People do not even know what satire is. But, there you go. So, the, it's, it's truly impossible to put out anything that will not be taken seriously by someone. Now, there are a couple of things to say about this. One is that on the issue of that Duffel Blog story about Sophia, the robot citizen, uh, there, uh, you, you can go look it up, Newsweek and Snopes and these other places posted these hand ringy articles while Snopes did their usual debunk. No, this isn't a real story. They didn't really behead Sophia and, you know, taking satire completely seriously. And Newsweek did this uh, hand wringy article. This is why, you know, we need fake news detectors and things, because people take these stories seriously and blah, blah, blah. And to a certain extent, hey, maybe they have a point. If people cannot even conceptualize absolutely blatantly obvious satire, then maybe they need the hand-holding organizations, the good, the good folks at Snopes or what have you, to fact-check every headline and make sure it's real before they post it out. <sighs> but, having said that, uh, obviously I do not think that people should need that, and people should have critical faculties that include an ability to identify satire. But, there is an interesting point made recently that by converting satire, especially political satire, into this concept of fake news, they are actually moving the goalpost of fake news into territory that essentially defangs one of the things that can get through to even normies when we look at contentious political subjects. As I say, 9-11 conspiracy theory, far and away the most popular thing I've ever done, and it's precisely because it disarms people's usual reaction to conspiracy talk. Oh, 9-11 is an inside job, you're crazy. Well, put it in a short, punchy, humorous little video, and suddenly millions upon millions of people will gladly watch it and even like it, even if they don't necessarily agree with it. They'll still enjoy it, they'll still take it in, they'll still get something out of it. Now, that's an interesting phenomenon, and it's something that I've been talking about for years. Me and James M. Pilato talked about this before. Uh, you can go back to my Peeling the Onion episode, where we talked about what is the role of satire in helping people to perhaps break through some barriers and mental barriers that they have against some of these topics. Very important issues here, but uh, I'm just... I gotta despair when people take blatantly obvious satire, with comedic music and everything, as well, this is, must be serious. I guess there's just a sliver of a percentage point of the population that literally cannot understand humor, which is sad. I truly feel sad for people for whom that is the case. But um, anyway, there's a lot to digest here. Um, but I will just, I suppose, leave it by saying, although I always have that moment of hesitation before I push the publish button, knowing 100% full well knowing that someone is going to take this seriously, I hit the publish button anyway. And I will continue to do so in the future, because we should not let this sliver of a percentage of point of people who cannot understand humor stop us from being humorous. Uh, express yourself how you are, and uh, that will lead to better communication overall, even if there are people out there who can't quite understand it. Anyway, big topic today. Be interested to hear your viewpoint on all of this, but I'm still going to be doing comedic videos from time to time, so that's the way it rolls here at quarterreport.com. Thank you again for all your support. Look forward to talking to you again real soon.